Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of The Art of Volunteering. I'm your host, Stormy Bell. Today, we have a very dear friend of mine, Dolores Connors. We've known each other for almost maybe a little over 20 years. Uh, I love the projects that she's involved with, and uh, we have just a mutual respect for the things that we do. So I want to welcome Dolores. well, Well, thank you, Stormy. Thank you for welcoming me to this wonderful platform to be able to share. So thank you for that. You're welcome. I'm just going to give a little uh, bio about Dolores. Dolores is an educator, author, and volunteer. You are a middle school teacher and a reading specialist. Right. Um, You've authored two self-published books, I Don't Want to Go and You See Mom, and they're both addressing the challenges of children on the spectrum. That's right. Yeah. And let's see, you're also the founder of a social enterprise, Right to Matter, which provides a vehicle to communicate support, uh, com- communicate support to individuals and families enduring the hardships of a loved one being incarcerated. Yes. Is that correct? That's that's what I have. Yes. So uh, again, welcome. We're we're gonna start off today, and I would just like you to share with, with our my listeners. The origins of Right to Matter. Yeah. What what started it? You know, your why? Just share with us. Yeah. So Right to Matter is very, very special to me. It merges two things that have a real impact or important are important on my heart and in my life. Uh, as a teacher, uh, I work with young people and I teach in a public school and I interact with all different kinds of students from different places, different backgrounds. And for Right to Matter, um, it was born through that experience. I teach reading. On Fridays, we have a book club, a book talk. So every Friday, a student is able to share a book that they're reading. And this one young lady all week had selected a book from our class library that, I have to be honest, I thought was a little gender uh off for her. Like it just wasn't used to a young girl grabbing that book and navigating toward it, but I didn't say anything. And, you know, she was reading. I was happy to see her reading. We get to Friday and the young lady says, um, it's time to share. And she raises her hand and I call on her and she says, I selected this book because it reminds me of my father. It was a book that was put out by Scholastics called Alcatraz. And she said, this book touches me. She said, I think about my father every night. And she um, opens up the book, hands the room and says, you know, this is where he sleeps. I think about where he sleeps. And now I know what it looks like. And, and I really like this book. At that moment, as a teacher, I didn't want to uh, dismiss her, her bravery for sharing. And at the same time, I wanted to respect her privacy of her family. So I was quite sure what to do at that moment, but I also found so much courage in her willing to share. In my own experience, my mother was uh, pregnant with me and she was incarcerated at that point. And I would have never shared that, never with anyone. And I thought about how brave it was for this young lady to share that. And um, the class went on and she was just proud. Um, proud, not of her experience. She didn't share any details of it, but just proud to share of a loved one that was no longer in her life, but that she was thinking about and that this book has brought comfort to her. And that's what reading is supposed to do. So at the moment I was super excited and I couldn't get it out of my head. Um, when the class was over, I kept thinking about it. And a colleague that I work with, I, I shared this story with her And she was like, wow. And I was like, people need to communicate. People need to be able to honor that loved one that's not there. They're still here in this world. And that's where Right to Matter was birthed. It's a greeting card company that fosters communication with people who are dealing with the process of incarceration. It gives dignity to that family member, to that coworker, to that church member who has that absent loved one in their life, in their lives. Loss is loss. And, you know, we're, people are still out here having to 
to be in this world and deal with that. And there should be respect toward it. So that is the, the origin of Right to Matter and how it got started and why it's so connected to my heart. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Let's start with some of the projects that Right to Matter is involved with. I know off the top of my head, the one I, I, I just so appreciate is where you've been producing a reading project to bridge the um, the divide between incarcerated fathers and their children. Right. The project, well, you can explain it more. Go ahead. So it's read to me as a reading teacher. And because reading is part of the origin story of Right to Matter, um, I merged the two because they just equally come together, right? Reading is something that allows people to build bonds. It allows people to remind them of their rich heritage. It reminds them to share. And it also reminds them or takes them away from what you can consider reality. Reading allows all of that. So it seemed like a very natural thing to do to be able to share a picture book. And I know how meaningful as a parent, how meaningful picture books can be. And I know how deep they can be, right? Picture books have themes. They have beautiful illustrations. There's vocabulary there. There's so much to do with the picture book. And so I thought, how could we, you know, merge these two and have people who are incarcerated, men right now, and then eventually we will move into a women's prison, um, into, uh, yes, women, a uh, women's prison. But right now, what could we do to build and connect and create a bond with that absent loved one. So the Read to Me project is we go into prisons and then we do a mini lesson on how to give a read aloud. So we just go over some strategies that help support people um, with reading a, a picture book out loud. And then from that, that person is videotaped with permission um, reading the book. A link from that videotape is then going to be sent over to the, the young person in their lives or the person in their lives who they'd like to share that. And that way, that person has a video of them reading the book. Hopefully, we're moving into where we can actually place that particular book in that child's hand or that loved one's hand and, and that they'll have it. And with that, it's just a beautiful connection um, where we're giving. And for most part, that's what fathers want to do. They want to be able to provide. They want to be, they want to feel satisfied with being able to provide. And even if it's a story, and I don't mean to shorten it to say even, a story is a very powerful thing to provide. So it, that's that's our, our main project this fall, um, excuse me, this summer, we'll be hopefully going into our first prison in New Jersey. And yeah, we're really, we're really excited about it. That's that's one of our, our projects. Our, it's our huge project. Well, they they all feel big to me, but yeah, that's that's a big one for us. I can only imagine what the impact that has on both the person reading, right, and, and the individual or individuals receiving the story. Have you heard any? Have you received any feedback of the impact? No, no. We are we've launched it in Harlem um, through a few people who are out of prison um, and with a young community group. Uh, and the feedback has been very positive. As you just shared, the giver and the receiver are both walking away feeling really powerful. Uh, I feel as if it's less intimidating to have a story read that a person can handle. And I, and I mean that in with the sensitivity of the feedback is it doesn't feel like you're asking too much, right? People can lift a, a picture book and it doesn't feel heavy. <laughs> you know, technically right, right. it feels light and it feels sweet. So when asking people to participate in this or to be a part of it, um, it, 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 it automatically gives people, okay, I think I can do this, I can do this. And then the outcome is is just powerful. Writers are writing with purpose. You know, they're they're sending us off into these worlds where resilience is coming up, where love is coming up, and friendship is coming up. That's what picture books give us. So to be able to provide that that 
that outline for people to dive into a deeper conversation is 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 what we're trying to do and it fosters this love that 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 we want to see and that we want to feel and we want to you know ex- share and express and it's all through books so it's it's it that's it and the um feedback has been positive i'll say okay <laughs> yeah that's amazing yes. I-, I love that um Mother's Day has just passed, and I know that in the past, you've had a project about giving greeting cards out um, that was at Rikers Island, right? Yes. Did you get to do that this year? So this year, we did not get a chance to do that for Mother's Day, but we're shifting, and we're going to be moving it over to Father's Day. But I'll tell you a little bit about that exciting project. So on Mother's Day, we show up. We have a little trinket gift. It has a um, uh, a kiss in it, like the little Hershey kiss. It has uh, eyeglass, and what is it? Your the wipes, visine, the little miniature visine. It has a tic tac in it. Uh, it has a hand sanitizer, a wipe in it. So it's this little cute little gift basket, and it also comes with a card. So as they are going into uh, taking the bus over because Rikers Island is an island and, and people meet at a certain location before going in, onto the island um, to visit their loved one. Before they go on to that uh, trip over um, to the island, we are standing there handing out these little trinkets and these cards. And some of the cards randomly, you know, have money in them or a gift card in them. Um, but what we're seeing is we understand that this particular day, this Mother's Day, this holiday where everyone is with that person that they love or, you know, wanting to be with and share. We understand that you're making an effort to do that in a huge way where it's, it has to feel some way. You know, we don't know. We don't want to put a judgment on it, but we just want to be here to say, listen, we hope you have a wonderful day. We know that you are on your way somewhere. So that's that's it. So we're going to be hopefully shifting that over to Father's Day. And and the good thing about shifting over to Father's Day is that um, mothers show up for Father's Day in a huge way. Um, they 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 really do. So it's a two. We're still winning with with sharing. These are moms who will probably you know be taking their children over uh, and and just showing respect. Mothers who are seeing their sons. So it's, 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 it's still love. It's still giving. And that's, that's, that's one of our projects that I enjoy. It's, it's nice. And it's, it's, it's useful. Like everything in that little trinket is perfect in your pocketbook. You might, you may just need it. So yeah, we're, we're very happy about that. So you say you're shifting it to Father's Day. You're going to do the same model or is it going to be slightly different? No, it would probably be the same model, same exact, right? Whoever is showing up at that time to go over for the visit, we want to just hand them a little token of appreciation and just acknowledgement of their love. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I love the project shoot. <laughs> so those are the two that I'm aware of. What else are you working on? Or is that kind of like, that's kind of like the most your capacity is right now? Right. So no, we're, we're continuing. It's, it's very interesting how Right to Matter is evolving. Right. It's it's a company. It's, uh, you know, it's making some shifts here and there. Um, but, you know, as we grow, we're doing different things. And we realize that the cards are our product, but our service is love. Like we just are overjoyed to be of service, to be giving. So even though we have the cards as our as our product, that's that's what we want to put out there. We are also putting out these community events and community programs under the name of Right to Matter. So for June, on June 9th, in celebration of Juneteenth, uh, Right to Matter is hosting an event at the Inglewood Public Library honoring all Black librarians and self-published authors. So, you know, it's through being able to able to host an event under Right to Matter that we feel like we're we're continuing to be true to our mission of sharing and communication. And so that that's one of our projects. This this uh Christmas we did a what do we do? Oh a, a book a picture book share. So we just had so many beautiful picture books and a community space 
and people came in to talk about, you know, the joy of reading and they got to sit and read. So in the middle of this hectic Christmas season where people are hustling and bustling, we gave them a space where they could read, they could color, they could chat, they could talk all through picture books. So that was a really fun project too. So Right to Matter, we are, we have a product, but we also are all about service and that's, that's what we do. It makes, it makes us happy. Yeah. So to get all of this done, what does your volunteer team look like? So that's a great, that's a great question <laughs> because Right to Matter is not a huge company and, you know, we're small. It, it is all through word of mouth. So it's always asking a friend or if I'm at an event and I'm hosting something and someone comes up to me, they'll ask, how can I get involved? How can I support? What can I do? And so from there, I'll reach out and say, hey, would you mind joining us for this event this day? And they'll say yes or or maybe not. But that's that's how it works. Um, I'm hoping that we'll, we'll be big enough to just attract people, people will hear about us and and reach out. Um, But right now it's, you know, calling a person who's standing next to me as I thought of something or (laughs) on my way somewhere and trying to like pull someone in. But that's, that's what it looks like. But I truly appreciate um, everyone who, who comes in willing to support at whatever capacity, you know, time is precious to all of us. And when people are given of their time to be of someone's else's mission, right? To support someone else. This this is very, very touching. So right now I'm I'm asking for volunteers anywhere I can um, and appreciating them. So that's, that's what that looks like. Well, we'll put in the show notes, um, either your email address or your website. So um, any of our listeners today, if they want to get to learn more, to get involved, they can find you there. Thank you. All right. Let's shift gears. Okay. Tell me about your volunteer journey. What does it look like? I love volunteering. Uh, it is a very important part of my life. For, for one of the reasons that I just shared, you are part of someone else's mission to help someone else. And when you show up, when I show up to volunteer, I'm showing up with, what do you need? What do you need? Right? And it's my energy. Like, I'm, I'm not on a clock. I, I'm there because I want to be there. Right. No one has. I wanted to contribute in some way. So I'm there to be of service. And it just it feels different. It feels not like work. It feels like a project that that is fun. So um, that's that's my journey. A lot of my volunteer support has been through literacy, through different literacy organizations. Uh, Let's see. We have barbershop books the Clinton Foundation through Laundry Cares. I do have 10 as another organization that I have both sides of the game. Uh, These are all just organizations that support literacy. So it's very easy for me to show up and volunteer for something that is so close to my heart. I mean, I also will volunteer to help clean up the creek (laughs) if if you need it, because that's important too. Um, But my volunteer journey is, is, is fun. And that's how it feels. It feels like anytime I'm signing up to go somewhere to show up for someone else, I, I'm showing up happy to be there and whatever they need me to do at that time, I'm happy to do it. So it's important. It's someone else's mission to help someone else. And that, that to me is big. Mm-hmm. Yes. I like that. That might end up on my social. All right. Just so you know. <laughs> yes. So you've already, I, we're, okay. I shared this with you before we started and now it's time for that question. Okay. Can you share a blooper? Uh, Something that didn't go as planned. Doesn't mean it went wrong. I, it just happened the way you thought it was going to. And what did you learn from it? Okay. So is it when I showed up to volunteer? Somewhere around okay. volunteering or right to matter? Just okay. uh, Let's see. All right. Um, I'll be very transparent about right to matter. Right to matter uh, started out as Right to Matter, W R I T E T O M A T T E R. We are now Right W R I T E, the number two with the word matter. We had to take a pivot because the person who I started the company with decided to do something else. And as a result of that, 
we needed to make a change. So it wasn't a blooper or a blunder, but it definitely was something that came up that needed to be adjusted. Um, and it's fine. You know, you just keep going, make a right turn and keep going and trust the right. <laughs> so, yeah, so that that's one thing that 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 was that was pretty big. Uh, showing up and realizing that you left uh, material that you needed uh, for, for, you know, for it to go smoothly has happened. But even in the middle of that, you you find something else. You, you know, like, no, I don't have black markers. How can I not have black markers? And then you realize that blue is such a beautiful color too. So I've had that happen and yeah, it's, it, it works out. It always works out. If it, it always works out to say, this will work out, it'll work out. And then it will work out. So, so that's, that's my experience. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Our conversation is almost over. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you the mic, so to say. Yeah. And I want you to love on Right to Matter. The impact you're making, why people should get involved, just the people who volunteer with you, whatever. Just love on Right to Matter. Sure, sure, sure. So I believe this, the right sentence at the right time can save someone's life. It, it can, right? And, and I mean that the sentence from a story can have a huge impact on a person's life. And that is as powerful as you can get to save someone, to hold on to someone. So right to matter, be it a card where you are reading a sentence that comes from a loved one or you are reading a sentence from someone you don't know, they just wrote it and it's beautiful and you enjoyed it, it has power in it. So Right to Matter as a company is something that that I do, I, I love with all my heart because I know what it can do for someone, someone I've never met before, but I know that that relationship, that bond is being built, it's connecting and it's, it's, it's special. It takes something that can be very uh, private and very uncomfortable to, to be a part of, and it can change it to something beautiful. When you mention prison and conservation to people, they get very nervous. They can get very nervous. They're not quite sure what to do with it. It, you know, it just has a very negative tone. But when you start talking about sharing books and stories and smiling families and looking at beautiful pictures, it changes it. So right to matter is is important. It's it's important for me and it's important for a lot of people I will never meet. And that just makes me happy. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. All right, Dolores, I want to thank you for coming on The Art of Volunteering. I know my listeners found value in every word that you spoke today. And I encourage my listeners to find out more, you know, find out a way to get involved in this impactful organization. Um, they're making a difference one person at a time. So those of you who are listening, I ask that you rate and review it wherever you're listening. It really helps other people have an opportunity to learn about the impact individuals are making worldwide. So I thank you. See you next time on The Art of Volunteering. Have a great day.